If you're a complete beginner to SOFA and soft robotics, welcome. This tutorial will show you how to create very simple scenes, like the one here, whilst also walking you through the basics of object modeling with SOFA. Before we start, I'll just quickly address what this tutorial will discuss and what it won't. The focus of this video is to help you to, first of all, understand the interface of SOFA, the general structure of a scene, and then the simulated objects components that are common to all the objects designed in SOFA. However, I won't present the modeling of a deformable material in this first steps tutorial. The specific modeling associated with soft materials will be presented in the tripod tutorial video. If you haven't done it already, download and install the SOFA framework along with the STLib, that is the SOFA template library. Make sure you have the STLib plugin. It is not mandatory to create scenes with SOFA, but it includes many ready-to-use objects that we call prefabricated objects, or simply prefabs, like these ones. They allow to build scenes very quickly and make it much easier to start with SOFA. You can then run this first step tutorial and do it along with me. On my side, I'll be using a computer running Linux. Each scene is described in a text file that is loaded by SOFA in the display window. In the tutorial, I write all the scenes in Python, but it's also possible to write them in the XML or the PSL languages. The browser window on the left, that you can show or hide if you go to Help Hide Dog Brother, contains the documentation of the scene, that is here the description of the tutorial. It also contains some links to the plugin's documentation, for example, by clicking here, you can get more details about the STLib. Let's start by setting up a simple scene. In this step, I'll show you what the general structure of a scene is. For this first scene, we'll use prefabricated objects, a cube and a floor object that are built in in the STLib plugin and so ready to use. So let me explain a bit about the structure of a scene. A scene can actually be seen as an ordered tree of nodes, each node being an object and containing one or several components related to the behavior of the object. The very top node of the hierarchy, the first parent node, is called the root node. A scene is written in a Python file that contains the description of the simulation. It always starts with a function create scene that takes the root node as single parameter. In order to build the simulated cube, we are going to use the prefabricated function cube. The parameters' names are rather intuitive, and so for this prefab object, you can define its name, translation, rotation, color, and scale parameters. The same applies to the floor prefab. Both objects must be imported from the STLib rigid objects at the beginning of each file using them. I'm also adding two behavior descriptions to the scene through the functions main header and contact header. The main header function defines gravity as the main force exercised on the object. When placed in the root node, the gravity force automatically applies to all the nodes attached to it. The contact header function states how a contact between the objects is handled. Here, the cube and the floor are not allowed to go through one another when they collide. So, an alarm distance and a contact distance are defined in order to ensure that the two objects won't collide. Also, as I have defined these behaviors in the root node, they will apply to all the child nodes of the scene, so to both the cube and the floor here. Those behavior functions are also imported from the STLib at the beginning of the code file. You can notice that I have set the gravity force factor at 0, minus 981, 0. The gravity force on Earth is of minus 9.81 meters per second squared when considering a vertical ascending axis. So in the scene, minus 981 corresponds to the gravity force expressed in centimeters along the second axis. Compared to it, the cube scale of 20 represents a cube of 20 centimeters side. So in SOFA, the user defines the scale of the objects through the definition of the constants of the simulation model. 
With this, our first scene is ready for testing. By clicking on Try the scene in so far, the scene is directly loaded. Otherwise, you can click on Write it yourself, which opens a blank scene that you can complete. Once you're done writing the scene, save it and go to File, Reload, or simply type Ctrl R to load the updated file in so far. This has to be done at each code change. If you want to reload the scene automatically at each change, it's also possible to start the tutorial in the terminal with the minus I option. Once a scene is loaded, click on the animate button to run the simulation. So the cube falls until it's at a close distance to the floor and stops moving. This corresponds well to the real experiment of a cube falling under gravity stopped by a floor. So if you want to reorient the viewpoint of the scene, you just need to click left and drag the mouse pointer. You can also scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Now there are two ways to modify the scene a bit. First, you can directly modify the code. For that, right-click anywhere in the graph panel and then open file in editor. This opens the code file. For example, if I want to change the cube color to blue, I can add the color parameter with the value 0, 0, 1. I save the changes and reload the scene, and now the cube is blue. Speaking of colors, you can see the 3D axis here that shows the vectors of the three directions in space, each of them in a specific color. Well, this helps to remember in what order to write the components of a vector. You know the red, green, blue color model? Well, the values are given in the same order. The one for the red axis first, then the green axis, and finally the blue one. Let's say that now we want to move the cube away from over the floor, so it can fall endlessly. We'll use the second technique to modify a scene to do that. In the graph panel, expand the cube menu and double click on mechanical object M state. The mechanical object stores the properties of the object, including its orientation and space. In the window that appears, go to the Transformation tab. The line Translation allows you to translate the cube. So 100 cm in the x directions, so the red vector, should do the trick. Now update and animate the scene, and you can see that the cube misses the floor now. Um, modifying the scene with this second technique doesn't change the code though. The changes are only saved until you close the scene. And that's it for step one. And now I'll explain more in details how the prefab objects are built so that you can then build your own. The objects in SOFA are all designed the same way with multiple models. A mechanical one for the computation of the reaction of the object to the forces that apply on it, a visual one that computes the 3D rendering in the simulation window, and a collision model that computes how the objects interact with each other. In this second step, we'll see how the first two ones are built. So how to model a physical object. First, create a node attached to the root node by using the create child function. This node will contain the different components defining the physical object we want to model. Then, for each of the models, we'll create an object of the cube with the function createObject. We'll start with the mechanical model. So, as I said, in this introductory tutorial, I will only deal with rigid objects. As all the points of a rigid object are moving together, studying the movement of one single point of it, usually the center of gravity, is equivalent to studying the movement of all the points. The aim of the simulation is to compute, at each time step, the next position and velocity of the center of gravity based on the force that applies to it, such as gravity. The center of gravity can move in the three directions of space and rotate around these three axes. This means that it has six degrees of freedom. So, the mechanical model of a rigid object consists of one point possessing six degrees of freedom. The object, mechanical object in SOFA, stores all the positions and velocities of the center of gravity of the object. For the properties related to the mass distribution inside the object that has an impact on the position of the center of gravity, 
Another object, uniform mass, is added, which, as the name suggests, implements a uniform distribution of mass. The positions and velocities are computed thanks to a time integration scheme and a solving method. The time integration scheme defines the system to be solved at each time step of the simulation. There are several available, and let's use the implicit allow method. The solving method describes how to solve the differential equations, ruling the movement of the object. Here again, there are different methods available, and we'll use the conjugate gradient one. So, for such simple scenes, it's not essential which solving tools are used, but for some systems, like very large ones, for example, it can be important to use specific methods. This model alone is enough to run the simulation of the cube's fall under a gravity force. However, as we want to visualize it in the simulation window, we'll also build a visual model that will create, let's say, a blue cube of 20 centimeters side. The visual model is defined in a new node, and the visual object is modeled with graphic vectors. The surface of the object is discretized, that is, divided into small surface elements connected together by points. The set of points resulting from the discretization and their connections to each other is called the mesh. So this is the mesh used for the visual model of the cube. The outer surface of the cube has been split into triangular elements. This mesh is described in a mesh file, the smcube27.obt file. In order to use it, we create an object visual that plots the graphic model with the OpenGL. Finally, we want that when the change in position is computed for the mechanical object, the visual model is also moving accordingly. For that, we build a correspondence between the two models in the form of a mapping tool called rigid mapping. Now the two models for the cube are ready. So for a more interesting scene, I'm also adding the floor prefab that I already used in the first scene. So I run the scene and I animate it, and the cube falls endlessly under the gravity force. You can see it even went through the floor as if it were a ghost. So the reason for that is that we never stated how the objects should interact with each other. And for that, we will need a third model that is handling collision. This step focuses on the implementation of a collision model for the cube so that it doesn't go through the floor anymore. For that, we create a child node of the cube that I call cube collision model. There are different objects to implement in order to describe the collision model. The collision occurs when the outer surfaces of different objects come in contact. This means that we need to describe the surface of the cube object, or to be more exact, we are going to describe the elements composing the surface in our discretized model. We use the same mesh as for the visual model that we load thanks to a mesh loader. The surface, decomposed into triangular elements, also shows line elements and points. Just as for the mechanical model, the positions and velocities of all the surface elements at each time step are stored in a mechanical object. When a collision occurs, the object is submitted to additional constraints. The behavior of the cube in such a situation is described in an object that we are going to add in the mechanical model of the cube. Finally, in order to build a correspondence between this model and the mechanical one, we also add a mapping. With this, we have defined the collision model of the cube. Um, the same model is implemented by default in the prefabs, so the floor here already has its collision model. In order for the collisions to be detected, it's necessary to describe what a collision is, that is, at which distance from one another we consider that the objects collide, and how the collisions are handled when they occur. This is what the contact header object is doing. As the collision detection and handling rules apply for all the objects in the scene, it's placed in the root node. I define that potential collisions are looked for within an alarm distance radius from the object, and if a collision situation is detected, the collision model computes the behavior of the objects, which are stopped at a contact distance from each other. I run the scene, 
And now you can see that the cube is stopped at a small distance from the floor. By zooming in, you can observe the small gap between the cube and the floor that corresponds to the contact distance. So it can seem weird to set a non-zero value for the contact distance, but remember that in a simulation, both space and time are discretized and not continuous. So if the objects move rather quickly towards each other, and if the alarm and contact distances are too small, there is a risk that from an instant to the next one that is computed, the objects have already entered collision. In such a case, the collision wouldn't be computed correctly. So if you've got this far with me, you now have three representations of the same cube object. A mechanical one, a visual one, and a collision model representation. This multimodal representation is characteristic of SOFA, along with the mapping functions to build correspondence between the representations. In the view panel, you can switch between the representations that you want to display. With this scene, we have produced a very similar scene to the one in step one, except that the cube is blue. The only drastic difference is the length of the code. So you can see just how interesting the prefab objects are. They allow to save a lot of time and make lighter codes. I'll finish this tutorial with a small exercise. Um, now that you know how a scene is built and how an object is implemented, I propose you to build rapidly this scene. And let's see how short the code can be with the help of prefabs. You already know about these lines, so I won't comment about them and I'll go directly to the objects. First, I define the floors, the former yellow one and also a smaller green one that I put over the first one. Now for the cubes, the seven of them are pretty similar. They only differ in their translation along the red axis, so the first component of the translation vector, and in color. It's more efficient to build all of them in a single loop structure. So starting from minus 210 centimeters, I move them to the right of 70 centimeters each. I also play with the color vector and gradually change the red and green proportions of the cube. Um, for the collision model, I rely on the prefab function contact header and on the built-in model in each object to handle it automatically. So let's now try the scene. All the collision situations seem to be handled properly, so the parameters for the alarm and contact distance seem to be adapted to the scene. And that's it for this first step tutorial. I know we haven't done anything on soft object modeling yet, but it's necessary to introduce the general modeling method using SOFA first. It's very similar with soft objects, but just a bit more complex as we also have to compute how the objects deform through constraints. So I encourage you to pursue with the next tutorial about our tripod soft robot. And if you have any questions or suggestions, you are invited to ask them on our webpage and I hope to see you in future tutorials.